Hello and welcome back. Now, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, the Philadelphia Flyers have a great schedule this week. Four games, two light nights, and a back-to-back, -back, and I showed you that everyone but Konechny is under 50% owned. But in last video, we looked at pretty much all of those guys, so in this one, we'll take a look at some other guys you may want to add because they're trending in the right direction and they're improving week over week. Now, you may have some guys underperforming for your roster, and this would be a good list to pull from if you're looking to drop someone and improve your team. So without further ado, let's get into the top trending players heading into week four. Just going to mention a couple of the guys that you're going to want to look at, at least going forward, some of the guys who have been trending in the right direction. Now, Pavel Buchnevich missed a bunch of time with an injury, but he's only 56% owned, and that is a mistake because he's been one of those guys that's been really good in small stretches last year and even beyond that. He's a guy who gets shorthanded points, power play points. He's really complete, and at only 56% owned, he's a guy that you're going to want access to. Um, Obviously, St. Louis is not the same offense that they were two years ago, but he is a guy that you're going to want to target top six power play time, etc. And again, at that ownership, he's probably there for you in even a 12 team league in some instances. So definitely a guy you're going to want to look at. Emil Bemstrom has been playing really well lately. Three goals in his last three games. He's 0% owned. So he's a deep league play that you can have access to. Getting a lot of goal production out of him as well. Um, they've been getting some you know, they have Marchenko on the power play. Bemstrom has been there in the past. And with Bemstrom scoring, I would imagine they're going to give him some power play time now. But Marchenko could be another guy to target from that team. Matt Potra. So this is a guy who kind of came out of nowhere, played junior last year, comes out, makes the Boston Bruins, and kind of fills in in that middle six section of their lineup as a center. He had a couple of really nice games. He's got five points in eight games, and he's uh, increased almost 22 spots up to a 54. So not the most complete player. But three goals, one assist in his last four games. He's 7% owned, so he's available in a lot of different leagues as well. You have uh, another Columbus Blue Jacket, Jack Roslovic. He's got two goals, four assists, six points in his last five games. He's 2% owned. So he's been a guy you can stream uh, kind of like a weekly option in last year. And then into this season, he was a little bit slow starting, but he's been relatively consistent over the past five games. And he is going to get a look in that top nine. So another guy that you would want access to. Even with line A out, he could potentially be centering one of the top two lines. So that could be interesting uh, to keep in mind going forward. Now, Ovechkin's gotten his game a little bit back in order, but he's 99% owned. You're not going to get him. Uh, Brendan Gallagher, 1% owned. He's uh, had a couple of points in his last number of games. He actually had an outbreak where he had a goal and a couple of assists in just two games and then kind of went quiet again after that. But uh, he's been a little bit better than what people have expected, and he is usually a shot volume guy. Um, so eight games, he's got three points, which is underwhelming, but not bad uh, when you consider the offense that they have in Montreal, and he's getting some of that time. Tom Wilson, as I just mentioned, uh, not that long ago, 47% owned a goal, three assists in his last five games, and you're getting him for the hits, and you're getting him for the shots and goals, and they're starting to come now. Washington playing a little bit better as of late. Uh, Justin Hull leading the NHL in plus minus not that long ago. He's been a little bit uh, better than ex expected or advertised, whatever you want to say about it. Uh, kind of pushed out of Toronto just because of his defensive liabilities, but he's been playing really well in Detroit. Not quite ownable at a 42, but Cam Atkinson we mentioned before. Uh, Gus Forsling got a, a goal the other day. That probably bumped his rating up a bit, but still a little bit low for my taste. We'll get down to a guy that you might want to target, Ryan Hartman. Uh, he's obviously that center in Minnesota that's centering Zuccarello and Kaprizov, and that's definitely exposure that you do want. 54% uh, owned, so kind of like Buchnevich, should be owned a little bit higher than that. Four goals, three assists in his last four games, and he did have a five-point game with a hat trick against Edmonton, where a lot of that production came from. But if he's going to explode like that, and if he's getting those top minutes with those players, that's a, a guy that you can have access to um, and Probably, you know, I think he's single uh, position center, but he is a guy that you're going to want to have access to in a face-off league because of that exposure and the face-offs that would come with it. Now, a little bit further down, Nino Niederreiter, usually a goal scorer with some hitting, and that's usually where you're going to get out of him. He's got six points in eight games, two goals, so the goals can still increase from where they are now, but two goals, two assists in his last two games, and he's 8% owned. So he's available for you. And he's going to get you top nine exposure in Winnipeg, which is always nice. And he's getting some power play two time, if I'm not mistaken. And you do want access to some of those guys on that power play. Uh, a little bit further down, we mentioned Nick Schmaltz. 
Another guy to kind of keep an eye on here, and I can't seem to locate him just off the top of my head. I don't know where he went, but we're thinking about Ryan Strom here. 12% owned, two goals, five assists, seven points in his last four games. Uh, if you see him, just like scream at the TV and I won't be able to pick it up, but he's been really good for Anaheim. Uh, I believe at points he's been dual eligible because he was a center and a right wing. I don't know off the top of my head if he is still dual eligible, but he's been playing really well. Um, Jaden Schwartz, another guy, 73 overall. Uh, he's a guy that had, you know, been brought in to Seattle to be one of those offensive guys, never really popped off. Two goals, two assists, four points in his last three games, and he's only 8% owned. So that's a guy that you could get access to and uh, potentially get some, you know, there's not a lot of guys going right now for Seattle in terms of offense. So if you can uh, get one of them, uh, that would probably help you out because he's never really been one of those guys that I've liked to target. But if he's going to be playing at this level and be that complete, I would definitely take a look at it. Um, they don't have the best schedule this week, but they don't have the worst either. Uh, so, you know, maybe not the right week to pick him up, but something to keep an eye on for the future. One other guy I wanted to talk about, uh, if I can find him again here, I seem to have lost my place. There's Ryan Strom. Just had to scroll a little bit further down, but Ridley Gregg, a 71 right now. He's been really complete. He's only been held pointless two times this season, and he's 5% owned. So he's slightly under a point per game, seven points in eight games. And as I mentioned, only two times has he been held pointless. So really consistent. So if you're looking for that consistency, instead of a guy who's going to pop off, Ridley Gregg has been playing really well. And uh, they did, um, you know, they lost Shane Pinto for 41 games. So Ridley Gregg is going to get an opportunity in that top nine. And you do want access to that top nine. So that is a guy you can have in almost every league format. Another guy I wanted to talk about was Mikey Anderson, 68, really complete uh, for a guy who's, you know, a top pair defenseman, but usually not an offensive top pair defenseman. Seven points in eight games is really good. He's another guy only held pointless twice this year, uh, and he's 9% owned. So these are some options that you might not have thought about. Uh, just giving you some other looks here. One other guy is Mason McTav McTavish, 72.5 on the completeness rating. He improved 10.36 from last week to this week. Uh, and the reason for that is two goals, three assists, five points in his last four games. He is a little bit more owned up at 30%. I believe he's dual eligible center left wing. So he is another guy that you're going to want to target. Uh, we're not going to go through every single player, but a lot of these guys have been you know, trending in the right direction. McAvoy's extremely complete and he's been improving. So that's really nice if you picked him up in the middle of your draft. Uh, Darlene up there again and continuing to grow offensively as he picked up a goal that bumped up his rating a bunch. Eric Gustafson is another guy you can target for the Rangers. He's getting power play two time. He's got four points in eight games. He started out as the sixth defenseman, but he's kind of been shuffling around, moving up and down, playing really well. And the Rangers are a team that has played very well defensively and their power play is red hot. So that could be another option for you, but we're not going to go over everybody. We're going to switch right now to the goaltending hub to look at some trending goalies. So as I mentioned earlier, Carter Hart, the number one goalie on the goalie rankings, and this is coming as a surprise because of the team exposure, 97th percentile in team expected goals against per game. The Flyers are surprisingly good defensively right now, and he's been benefiting from that. So his goal saved above expected is above expected, but it's not crazy high. He's doing a lot uh, in terms of the defensive structure in front of him. He's playing really well, 924 save percentage, 2.2 goals against and four wins and a shutout. So really complete. If you believe that he can keep this up for the rest of the year, then this would be a nice uh, time to try to shore up your goal goaltending and get a trade in there. But if you have him and you think that this is not going to last, this could be an excellent sell high opportunity because he started out incredibly hot. He's probably one of the top goalies in your league. And if you can parlay that into something that you need for your team, uh, a really valuable forward or another goalie and a forward, something like that to address a need. This could be a nice sell high opportunity. I happen to think Philly can continue this play. I don't think they're going to be a top, uh, you know, top of the Metro division type of team, but they are playing really well. I would expect this number to come down a little bit. They're really good defensively right now. I would expect some ebbs and flows throughout the season, but Carter Hart, this is nice to see as it's, we've been waiting for this for a couple years now. I mentioned him in last year's preseason video as a potential candidate to break out. And he did short term in last year's like October into early November, and then he fell off. So let's hope that he can keep this going this year. 
Now, beneath him, you got the usual suspects, Georgiev, Saros, Swayman's up there. He's been playing really well, 957 save percentage and four wins for Swayman. So if you have that uh, Boston tandem, you're really happy with what you got going on right now. Jonas Johansson has been uh, one of those guys that we talked about in the past because of his save volume. The team defense has been atrocious in front of him, but he is playing really well. Two shutouts, four wins. Uh, 925 and a 26 goals against. So early in the season, I had to drop him because he was getting shelled. The team defense wasn't great and he wasn't putting up really good save percentage. Then he comes back with a couple shutouts and I pick him back up for this week because he did have a two game week. I believe it was last week. So I wasn't necessarily looking at the game volume from him, but he is one of those starters and he is probably available in a lot of leagues. So being one of the top goaltenders in the league right now, one, two, three, four, five, Fifth in the league is really exceptional for Johansson, who was basically a league backup that nobody ever thought about for fantasy until Vasilevsky got hurt. So really nice to see from him. Um, as we move a little bit further down, Joseph Wall taking over the net a little bit in Toronto. If you're wondering if you should trade for him, I don't know if I'd do that. He's got a really good goal saved above expected. The team defense isn't great, so that's the main reason I wouldn't. Uh, the save percentage is excellent. You'd also be buying at a premium right now for Joseph Wall. But if he's available on your wire, I would recommend going out and picking him up as he is really you know, playing incredibly well right now. The save percentage is great. The goals against is great. They're getting the offensive support for him. So he is an option that you can potentially have. I just wouldn't necessarily think that they're going to ride him as the number one when they have Samsonov uh, and Samsonov's not injured. If he gets injured, maybe that's another discussion that we could have. But for right now, I think it's going to be more of a 1A, 1B. Uh, they just kind of flipped 1A and 1B. Now, Vimelka, we talked about earlier, 53% owned, and he's got a 926 save percentage, 2.5 goals against. The team defense is better than you would think, and this is a guy that you can have in a lot of different league formats. He's trended in the wrong direction last week, but still really good, uh, still above expected. Um, the save volume is pretty good as well, and you know, getting a little bit of everything kind of complete across the board here. Cam Talbot has improved over the last number of weeks. He's in the top 15 right now. Um, the team defense should be better than this. It's not right now. That is something to keep an eye on. And he's got a 905 save percentage, but that's been coming up in the last couple of weeks. So um, as we look at some of the trends, we'll bring this back out and we can look over here on the right. So Stolars with a nice shutout. I'm not sure exactly why he's not uh, improved from last week. I think he didn't have any data before that. That was his first start, which is why the change isn't there. But the Stolars shutout was really clutch for me earlier in the week. Anton Forsberg going in the wrong direction, the save percentage climbing down. The Ottawa defense is kind of uh, underwhelming this year, as we were to kind of expect. They're, they're not the tightest defense, and then they just lose Thomas Shabbat for four to six weeks. So this might not be the time to pick up Forsberg. And if you own Corpusalo, you might want to pe uh, you know, pair him up with somebody else, probably not Forsberg because of that team defense exposure. But another interesting story here we were talking about in the preseason, Darcy Kemper and Jacob Markstrom. Kemper kind of piecing it together right now. Two wins. The 890 save percentage is bad, but he's changed uh, 10 spots or 10 points in his rating. And that was an excellent last game that he had. I believe it was Saturday night. Uh, stopped eight of eight in the shootout and got them the win. They're you know, kind of slowly coming together in Washington. I don't want to say that they're there yet, but I do think that they're more there than Calgary right now. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. These are kind of the same tier goaltenders, which is why I'm mentioning them in the same breath. Um, Jake Allen, really good week, 930 save percentage on the year, four games, three wins, 2.6 goals against. So Montreal has been playing really well and getting some contributions. Cole Caulfield with an overtime game winner. Uh, that was nice for my team. And Montreal goaltending is hard to own sometimes because of the fact that their team defense isn't the best. They're sixth percentile. So that's why you wouldn't want them. But this 3.7 above expected is nice. The 930 save percentage and the wins are pretty good for Jake Allen as well. And then as we go back to the trending list here, uh, Corpusalo getting his game a little bit back together at a 902 save percentage. Uh, we mentioned Johansson, Swayman, Joel Hofer, limited sample size, two games, one win, 913 save percentage. So St. Louis having some good goaltending right now. Uh, and then one other guy I wanted to talk about, uh, Thatcher Demko, 936 save percentage, three wins in five games, 1.9 goals against. That's what you like to see out of Demko. He's been improving over the last couple of games. He didn't play last night, but um, that's probably helpful for you because uh, Vancouver fans are probably 
really furious about what happened in that Ranger game with the trip at the end, but um, Demko has been playing really well, so that's at least a nice silver lining for you. Lastly, with Vanacek and the Devils, so he's got an 891 save percentage, three wins in six games, which isn't great. And then you've got Schmid, who I don't even think he's, he's probably really far down here. Yeah, 19 is his goalie rating. So the team expected to, you know, goals against the defense component here is really poor right now. That's been the thing that I was monitoring in the offseason. They lost Graves and Severson, and they bring in Hughes and Colin Miller, and it hasn't quite been exactly the same, and that's been affecting their goaltending. 863 save percentage for Schmid, uh, 4.1 goals against. That's not to your liking. Kachekov, another guy who was top 15 last year. They still do have the team defense, but he didn't necessarily play well. 838 save percentage. And then you've got Skinner down here at the bottom. He played much better against the Rangers the other night. Uh, they just didn't give him any support, and I don't know how much support he's going to get. He would be a second half play for me. If you can float an offer for a guy who owns Skinner, um, try to pick him up while they're still you know, relatively poor uh, defensively and offensively. This could be a nice buy low because I think towards the end of the year, he's going to be the guy getting those starts. Campbell hasn't looked any better, and I think Skinner is the guy, but they're just not putting it together for him right now. But we're not going to go over every goaltender. That's going to do it for this one. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too, too much information for you, but hopefully you got what you needed and you can get those lineups set up for next week and get out in front of it. Hopefully you're 3-0 by this point, or if you're not, you're getting back into the thick of the race. And uh, if you are, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, but thank you again, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.